This playthrough is rated T for teen. All right, it's time to find ourselves a, uh, a a money stasher and find out what the whole thing with that is about. Greetings and salutations, viewers. We're well, back here with another episode, of Hotel Dust Two, Room Two Fifteen. In the last episode, we found out we found out some possible theories about why some money was stashed in our toilet. You know, we've uh, you know the whole thing about reading information in games that there could be red herrings and stuff like that. But there's some clues popping up together. You know, there was a robbery not too long ago, money missing. You know, Jeff uh, supposedly says his stuff stolen, but he's acting weirder than a guy who just had the store stolen stuff is acting and yeah it looks like something's going down and we've been implicated but uh, we're trying to keep our hands clean sort of so let's see what happens today what am i supposed to do with all the loot i don't know man just, just go to mcdonald's or something i don't like mcdonald's by the way there's a couple of things i don't mind from mcdonald's but anyway huh the phone again Man, Rachel's been calling us like every hour on the hour, it seems like. And she really is thirsty, isn't she? If you know what I mean. Phone's ringing, dude. Thanks, Donnie. All right, all right, stop. Yeesh. I forgot how much I don't miss the phone rings from like back back when I used to have a rotary phone and stuff like that when I was a kid. Man. Hi there, handsome. You doing okay? What is it, Rachel? Your usual cheery self, I see. Listen, I dug up some info on this Ostrazone fellow. Let me have it. You're welcome. Okay, let's see. He was born in England in 1875. And he died in 1910 at the age of 35. The whole career is one big mystery. The guy was a complete unknown while he was alive. Then about 40 years ago, after he died, 10 or so of his works were discovered. Suddenly, people love his stuff, and he becomes the art world's new darling. Yeah, that... That, you know that happens more often than you think like s someone's art is just eh, and then as soon as they die someone's just like this is brilliant and yet the guy's not around to enjoy it you know like happens to all famous artists very rarely does a an actual good artist like get famous for his work and the people that do get famous are usually like charlatans or hacks or people who aren't actually that good but had the like right sense of like promoting themselves to, to make it happen you know from what I've read, artsy types appreciate his subtle and distinctive brushwork. There are a lot of collectors out there who want his paintings in a big way. Big way, you say? You wouldn't believe how much folks are paying for his stuff. It's crazy. People pay anything for art. It's insane The like what the prices of art is, even contemporary art. Oh, and his most valuable painting is something called Angel Opening a Door. Angel Opening a Door, huh? But the thing's been stolen, so there's there you go. Someone stole it? That's right. It says here it was taken from the Travis Art Museum. Let's see. Yep, three years ago. Interesting. Apparently it's the largest of all Ostrazone's paintings, and the most popular. Isn't this all just fascinating? Yeah, sure, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so Kyle, sweetie. Huh? Don't call me sweetie. Why the sudden interest in dead painters? Look, people need hobbies, all right? Actually, I just wanted to know about angel paintings. Angel paintings? You mean paintings of angels, right? Yeah, whatever. Listen, I found some dirt on Bradley in the last few hours. Bradley? That's the man you're looking for, right? The one you won't tell me about? Bradley was my partner when I was on the force. There you go. See, I told you. Now get out of my way. Three years ago, he went rogue and stabbed me in the back. He used his badge to steal a buttload of cash and a big angel painting. Then he vanished. I want to know what happened. Why did he did that? That's why I'm tracking him down. Oh. That's all you have to say? Let me guess. Ed's out again, isn't he? Um, yeah. Yeah, he's out. I'll have him give you a ring when he gets in. Do it. Hey, Kyle, thanks for telling me about Bradley. Sure. Something about this hotel is changing, Kyle. For the best? It's hard to say. Well, thanks for that little expedition, Rachel. Okay. Eight bells. Time to go see Rosa. Alright, yep, let's go. 
Let's go check on on our lady, 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 lady. All right, time to head down the stairs. Going down the stairs, oh, up the stairs, going down the stairs, up, down the stairs. Hmm? Now what? What the? The door opens at the end of the hallway. Jeff. Huh? Hey, Jeff, what you doing? Yeah, what's wrong? What's wrong now, Jeff? All right, what's wrong now? Something happened? You look like roadkill. It's nothing. Really? Great. See you around. Hey! Wait a minute, will you? What? Dunning says any is say anything to you? <laughs> like what? Yeah, uh, about you plenty. No, 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 like what? No, like what? Oh, never mind. You didn't hear anything anyway. Yeah, I heard. Somebody boosted your stuff, right? That's what this is about. Did you hear? Uh, did you hear, huh? Did you hear, huh? Did, did I read that right? Maybe? Anyway. What was taken from you, buddy? I can help you out. So what got taken? I'm not, I'm not telling you that. Not telling. Oh, uh, hold on. Hey, hey, hold on. Yeah, you lost 20,000 right now, because, you know. Uh, come on, tell me. Why not? Get serious. You could be the thief, for all I know. But I'll get my things back. That idiot manager is searching right now. Room to room, which means he'll visit you too. Doesn't that frighten you at all? Why would you care what I think or why I'm frightened about that unless, you know, you did something? Hmm. This fun for you, kid? You like playing cops and robbers? Huh? Look at you standing there with that idiot grin on your face. What a sap. What in the name of Santa Hill's going on here? Someone's yelling behind me, and I think I know who it is. Or, sorry, someone's yelling behind me, and I think I know who it is. Sorry about that. Sometimes it's hard to remember who talks when it sometimes. Something happened? We're just talking. Great. Last thing I need in my life is more useless chit-chat. Then stop wasting time and start searching. You're so utterly useless. Why won't you look for my things? <laughs> Dunning's like... Jeez, calm down, man. Jeff clamps his mouth shut and storms off. Yeah, Dunning must have given him the look. Well, crap. You plan on going through everyone's things? I look like Sherlock Holmes to you. If there's anything, if there's an investigation, I gotta call the police, much as I hate to. I bet. Yeah, most people don't like getting the cops involved. But, what's eating them now? Okay, I'll bite. Yeah, why not call the cops anyway? No, what's the problem? What's wrong? Uh, ain't nothing, but... Again with the but. What is it? It's a black hole. No, that's... Sorry, that's a, a reference. It's that angel, kid. He's off kilter, you know? Rubs me the wrong way. I mean, he is acting a little bit weird. I mean, weird, like I said, weirder than a guy who's lost his $20,000, apparently. What makes him off kilter, my man? Now, why does he seem off kilter? Sometimes when I call him, he doesn't react. Doesn't react like how? He ignores you? I ain't exactly sure, but I'll talk to him and it's like he don't hear me. Gotta say his name a few times before he pays attention. And he's all bent out of shape about his stuff being stolen, right? But he don't seem upset in the right way. More like it's an act. And all this business about searching everyone's stuff. Had enough of that. You think he's lying? I don't know. But I don't want to call no cops. I hate cops. Most people don't. If anything, it just makes things worse, depending on the situation. What are you doing? What are you going to do? I'm going to think things over for an hour is what I'm going to do. One hour exactly? You got a show to watch or something? I'm a punctual man. Anyway, I've got to give it an hour, then hear a story again. Then I'll decide whether or not to call the police. 
Dunning finishes talking and slouches off. The optimal word is slouch off, my friend. But anyway, we need to go see Rosa, so let's go through the right hallway. I didn't I didn't go through the whole thing before, but this is where we need to go to meet Rosa, so. So yeah, last time we went up just the thing here, but Rosa's room is over here. Ah! Oh, there you are, my dear. Ah, ah I talked to you. Yeah. Trying to do a bad gold bloom impression or something like that, so. Ah, Mr. Hyde. Hello, what's good time you have? I was hoping you'd come along and here you are. Something happened? It's Mila. She's not feeling very well, poor thing. She's running fever. How bad? She seems high, but I think that's the worst of it, at least for now. I'm gonna run to the front desk and get some medicine. Do me a favor, go to my room and watch it until I get back, okay? Good. I'll be back in a jiffy. Yeah, sorry I can't help you. Don't want to help you at all. Yeah, we'll help you. Yeah, okay, why not? Thank you, Mr. Hyde. I'll be back before you know it. Just you wait. Rosa finishes talking and scuttles away. Scuttles. What does scuttling, like, what would scuttling look like? You know what I mean? I know it's a descriptive case of her leaving. It's just, it's one of those things that sometimes you hear a description and you're kind of like, what would that actually look like? I mean, anyway, let's go inside. Apparently the kid's not feeling too good. I guess we could check her out for a bit. I wonder what Mila's doing. I guess we get to check out Rose's room. That's actually pretty nice looking. At least to me, anyway. Oh, there she is. That's... Looks like a ghost for a second. I mean, pasty white, bl almost blonde white hair, you know. Sleeping, huh? Hey. <laughs> a puzzle. Gotta touch her on the shoulder, dude. Very awkward. Hey, kid, wake up. Hey, listen. <laughs> How you feeling? Dot, dot, dot. Rose is gonna get you some medicine. Take it easy, okay? Meeting all these new people tired you out, didn't it? Yeah, that's what happens to people like introverts like myself. If you meet too many new people at once, it like really... Like I said, I've described it before. It's basically like a, a feeling of weariness and tiredness, you know, where like you're, you just feel drained after meeting so many people. You just want to like get away from it for, for a hot minute. That's why I don't like parties and stuff like that. So that's a... So, hey, I got something I need to ask you. Can you tell me something about your base bracelet? Was it a present? Well, that helps at least. Yeah, who gave it to you? This is hard. Can't tell me, huh? Well, I mean, she's she's mute. Whether it be physically mute or emotionally mute. Great, now what? Uh, think, Kyle, think. Wait a second. Mila, can you write? Here, write down the name of the person who gave you the bracelet. There we go, we have pen and paper, folks. What an obvious invention. Write it here. I open my notebook and give it to Mila. She writes something in the notebook. Here, take your notebook back. Okay. A Photoshop book in, in front of a picture that are like are two separate entities and don't even look similar. Huh? Now let's take a look at our uh, booklet and see. So, Papa. So, her dad? <laughs> you shall call me father. Papa. Good enough. You got the bracelet from your father? What's his name? Here, write it down. I open my notebook and give it to Mila. This seems so redundant. She writes something in the notebook. And once again, we need to grab the notebook. Exciting, isn't it? I'm just, I'm just messing. Hmm? Now let's, what does it say now? Robert Evans. Yeah, Robert, I don't know who that is. Your father's name is Robert Evans? Huh. All right. So, what's your father do? Where does he live? 
You're really grilling the kid, aren't you? Here, write down for me. Yep. What's wrong? She doesn't like this line of questioning. You don't want to tell me? Huh? No, oh, Rose is back. I didn't take her very long. Oh, it's you. Great. Thank you for coming, Mr. Hyde. I'll take over now. You can go. Okay? Good. We're in the middle of a conversation. Well, it'll have to wait. My meal is tied. Finish up later, all right? Now skedaddle. Fine. Nosy old lady. All right, fine. Well, let's just head on to wherever we head. Whoa. Dunning? Popping up like a gosh darn jack-in-the-box? That you, Mr. Hyde? What you doing here? Let me tell you something, Mr. Hyde. I see no reason for you to be wandering the halls like some kind of spook. You keep sneaking around and I'm going to get suspicious. Why don't you go back to your room and sit still for a bit? Yeesh. Turning turn... Uh, Dun Dunning turns and goes into the room. Man, he's... Maybe the whole situation's got him a little edgy right now. Alright, fine. We'll go back to our room. Jeez. Go back to room 215. No place like home. You know, It's only 8 o'clock. It's not like it's bedtime. Well, some people go to bed at this time just because... Well, now what do we do? Well, as soon as we get back, we... Someone, uh, uh, someone comes to us. Why do they always come to me to die? Huh? Who is it? Alright, who is it this time? Avon calling. Oh, it's Melissa. Great. Mr. Hyde? What is it, Squirt? Um, uh, Mr. Hyde, can you help me? With what? One of my wings came off. You have wings? Did you drink Red Bull or something? No, my doll. I ripped one of the wings off my doll. On my doll. Come on, kid. Get your old man to fix it. He can't sew. He's a man. Well, like I said in a, a, a video in another game I, I recorded, uh, sewing is a very useful hobby if you want to like keep your clothes up and other things without having to keep paying like 50 bucks for a brand new shirt when you could probably just sew it up, you know. So anyone can learn it. I wish I was very good at it, but so anyway. He's a surgeon. He sews people all the time. Hey, I'm a man. Yeah, whatever. But Mr. Summer said to ask you. <laughs> he said you could fix it. So can you fix it, please? Why did Mr. Summer say I could fix it, though? Summer told you I could fix it? Uh-huh. He said you're a salesman and have gadgets and stuff like that. He said a bunch of other stuff, too, but I didn't understand him. And then he kept talking and got bored. And I got bored. He smells weird. Why do you get start drinking or something like that? Well, it's five o'clock somewhere, right? And he said that you had something that could fix my doll. Oh yeah, didn't he get our package at some point? Hmm. Summer, you two-bit con artist. What's a con artist? Can't believe anyone would think I could sew. No, no, she put on the waterworks. All right, all right, relax. Hold your breath and count to a million or something. Well, we gotta have something in here. All right, let's check our check our cases. We gotta have something in one of these packages. I forgot it was this one or the other one. Uh, no, not this one. Sorry. More bad, wrong one. Ah, there it is. The products Ed sent over in the box. There's a mini sewing machine in the box. Yeah, this is what we need. I got a mini sewing machine. Yeah, we checked this a while back, but uh, we were like, why would we need such a thing? Uh, yeah, but yeah, that's what we're looking for is the sewing machine, so let's talk to Melissa. Look, Squirt. Please, mister. Oh, yep, there's the doll. There's the Photoshop doll in, on uh, predisposed on this little kid here. It's so weird, like the art differences and everything like that. So, all right, let's learn how to sew. What the? It's almost like the gods themselves are telling me how to sew. If only it was that easy, folks. If only it was that easy. I don't know if I'll get this perfect just because of the, the way the stylus setup is on this machine or on this. There we go. All right. Wasn't sure if I could get it right. It's easier if you do it on an actual DS, you know. There, all done. Yay! 
Ah, oh, now I feel good that she's happy. Because teenagers are usually not happy. They're usually very, very edgy and depressing people. Pretty good, huh? Now get lost. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! Hey, mister. What? Are you and that one guy friends? Are you talking about Summer? Or what one guy? Louie? I don't know. He's the guy in room 213. Oh, isn't that Jeff? Hmm. No, he's a chump. Why do you think we're friends? Because I saw him coming out of your room. I thought you were talking or something. Wait, he was in my room? Hmm. And there was uh, something in my toilet later. He's the toilet bomber. You saw him what? So it was, Angel. What's wrong, mister? Nothing, kid. Now take your doll and go back to your room. Your old man's probably wondering where you're at, where you are. Okay. Melissa takes her doll and leaves. As you should. 8.40 p.m. Yeah, I don't really have that type of voice, but I wish I did. I wish I had that, like, announcer voice, you know, like, old-time radio, or, like, Gary Owens. Now, that's a person to aspire to if you want to do, like, radio-type talking, that's for sure. So Jeff was in my room, was he? I think it's time he and I have a little chat and see where it goes from there. Yeah, guy had to 213 was where he's from. All right, Jeff, I got some words for you. Some nasty words. Hello? Knocking gets me nothing. Hmm, nuts. Nobody ho, huh? What is room he's breaking into now? Hmm. Hopefully it's not just me. Wait a second. When I saw him in front of the restaurant... Oh! He just come out of the left hallway door. I bet he was up to no good uh, no good on the other side. Hmm. Well, we got our next objective. To the left hallway we go. Woohoo. I think it was just yeah, it was just coming from the left hallway, so. I was double checking something real quick. Okay, never mind. Just head to the left hallway, so. In we go. Oops, just open it. Should be open. All right, where do we need to check? Hmm, let's check the laundry. Perhaps something in there. <laughs> Hello? All I'm doing is bruising my knuckles. All right, fine, we'll go in. Open the door. Open the gates. Hmm, seems like pretty standard. Now, let's see what this has to say. More description. Looks like a heavy iron. Rose's arm must be huge. It's a wooden cabinet. Oops. It's a hanger. Lovely. Can't click that. Oh, yeah, we can. Okay. It's a hanger rack. There's nothing on the t ironing board. That's an ironing board? I'm so used to the ironing boards that have like that X cross formation, not like this long thing. You know, the ironing boards that look like you could easily knock it over despite it being something that's supposed to hold a heavy metal object for ironing your clothes. Yeah, back in the day where you had to put, uh, where you had to, like, if you didn't want to pay, like, hundreds of dollars to, like, get your clothes dry clean, you'd clean, you'd use an iron, you know, you put water in it, it would uh, put moisture in your clothes, and you'd, you know, run it over the clothes to straighten out wrinkles and stuff like that. Those were the days. Although, I usually had my mom do that, but I didn't really learn to do that because by that time, People didn't really iron their clothes anymore. Or not commonly, anyway. Okay, garbage can's empty. At least Louie did something, so. All right, nothing there. Oops, did not mean to click that again. I meant to look over here. Yeah, it looks like we got a few other things we can check out. Laundry, ba uh, hamper, basket thingy. There's a shelf above the washing machine. I'm no scientist, but I think that's a bottle of bleach. Now, make sure not to get it on your, on your, remember to separate the colors from the whites. You don't actually have to do that anymore with a lot of most modern washing machines because of the uh, way they do uh, cleaning solutions now. You can just mix them all you want. Um, well, I guess it depends, but for the most part. Now, that's a big gushing, wa wa big washing machine. Guess hotels do a lot of laundry. The washing machine's empty. 
Sad. There's a wooden cabinet next to the washing machine. The linen cart. I wonder if it's worth searching. Yeah, sure, why not? Let's search this linen linen cart or whatever. Oh, we got a puzzle. Great. Alright, just throw everything out. Cause a mess. Da 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 dee dee doo doo dee doo 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 doo. What the? What's this thing? Okay. Come on. Come on. Oh. Alright, it's not letting me. I guess there's nothing in that one. Huh. Nothing. That seems weird. Perhaps there's uh, more you know, laundry carts? No? Hmm. Well, we'll check it again later. Maybe I missed something. There's not a lot of detergent in here. I bet this is bleach or some kind of stain remover. Who knows? Who knows? It looks like a cleanser of some sort. It's a jar cleanser. It looks homemade. That's a scary thought. Oh yeah, you can do a lot of crazy things at home. There are some sheets in the washer. Hope they're mine. It's an industrial washing machine. Switch over there. It's a big washing machine. Maybe I'll clean my socks later. I do need to clean my socks. Nothing inside the washing machine. Hmm. Let's try it again. On that linen cloth. I feel like I missed something. I think I did. Let's try to look inside this thing again, so... Yeah, let's search it again. Do I have to actually take out all the linen again? Yep. There it is. Haha. -ha. I thought I missed something last time. It's a gun. Why is there a gun in here? I was like, I thought I missed something when I was like checking. I was like, wait a minute. There's supposed to be something here. What do we have here? I found a pistol hidden in the laundry cart. Okay, that's not common. It's not my pistol. At least I don't think we have a pistol. So I guess someone didn't like the room service. Uh-oh. Who's there? No, oh, it's Louie. Oh, Lou, it's you. Brother, you got to stop sneaking around. What you doing anyway? Yeah, <laughs> mind your own business, dude. Get out of here. Now I found something. Close your head, Louie. I just found something interesting. I've actually never heard that term before, close your head. Anyway. Hard, that's laundry. You find Dunning's used tidy whities or something. It's a gun. What? Yeah, the linen cart. In the car. Oh, man, trip. You're playing with me, ain't you? Yo, didn't you break into the bar or something? Because you're talking like a crazy man. Wait, for real? You really found a piece? Come on, man, let me see it. Here it is. Holy crap. What kind of crazy person wants something like that here? Rosa ain't been in here today, you know, and I ain't doing laundry unless I have to. Maybe it's one that one guy. What one guy? Well, yeah, I have a theory, but let's ask him anyway. Who did do the laundry? Hmm? Any guess who used the laundry today? Yeah, man. Dude in 213, that Jeff Angel guy. He was wandering up and down the hall, so I gave him a little holler. Asked if we had a laundry room, and I told him where it was. Angel, huh? Figures. Where's the little prince think he is, man? This ain't the rich, you know. Something about him gives me the willies. Plus, he does nothing but cry and moan. I don't like what's going on the menu. My bed's too hard. Guy won't shut up. I won't. I want to tell him to take his pansy ass out of here and run home to mama. Oh, now and now he's wailing about all his crap got stolen. I'll tell you, man, he's driving done and nuts. Old man spitting nails. What got stolen from Jeff? Cash? Well, that's wrong. Right. But listen to this. Guy lost 20 J's. Can you, can you believe that? Who has that kind of moolah in a hotel? Guy with that much cash must have done dirt, something dirty, Raw. Right? So he claims someone lifted 20 large from him, huh? 
That's his story, and he's sticking to it. His cash is in my room. Whoa! I found it wrapped in a plastic bag in my room's toilet. Okay, now I know you're playing with old Louie. Who gonna do something like that? You tell me. I went downstairs after I found it, and Jeff was already yapping away. So you think... Yeah, I think timing was too close to be coincidence. And here's the kicker. I got an eyewitness. Melissa saw Jeff come out of my room. No way! What a dirtbag. What you gonna do, Hyde? Yeah, what are we gonna do? Donna's thinking about calling in the cops on this, and the LAPD is no joke. You gotta watch your step, brother. You're right. Last thing I need is to get caught up in Hollywood drama. Ugh, Hollywood drama, that's the worst drama. Especially now that I found a lead, lead on Bradley. Hold it, you got a lead? Did you find something in room 217? A lighter. A lighter? That's right. Looks like the one Bradley carried. So the cat who stayed here was what six months ago and your name was? That's my hunch. Yeah, well if that's true, why'd the dude use your name, man? And why'd stand here in the first place? No clue, Louie. That's what I've got to find out. But first, I have to clear up these distractions. I dig you, brother. That punk Jeff's planted something. We gotta make him talk. We gotta find out why he's trying to set you up. My thoughts exactly. We gotta trick him, yeah? Make him slip up and do something stupid. He ain't from the streets. He's some spoiled rich punk. We can roll him easy. Alright, Louie, let's do it. Now, how do we play it? Yeah, I guess... Um, wait, wait. We could... No... Now you guys are from the street, now you're trying to figure out how to do the plan in the first place. Okay, call it. Check this out, my man. Yep. I'll get Jeff to come out of his room, what? Well, and then while he's gone, I go in and give the place a quick shakedown. Bingo! I'll bet my last dime there's something in his room that'll nail him. I think you're right. So, you want I should go ahead and set the trap? You got any dirty cop tricks I can use? Beat sticks or sweet talk or that kind of crap? Uh, you just call them away. No. You gotta do the Clyde and Crest. Tried and true classic. Create a distraction. They can create a distraction? Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Punk's in room 213 and the room next to him is vacant. So room 214 is where I'll do my thing. I'll go there and uh, get his attention by making a bunch of loud noises or something. That's some plan. Don't sweat me, man. Look, I'll get him out of his room. Then I'll just keep him busy for a while, you dig? I guess that'll work. Okay, let's go in five. All you gotta do is go and wait in room 217, yeah? Louie finishes talking and rushes out of the room. It looks like our next step is to create the distraction. So, all right, let's head on, uh, head on up there. I don't think there's anything else left in here, so let's go back upstairs. So. On our way to create a distraction and find out why this guy's trying to hide money in our room. I think it was just a coincidence that he hid in our room. Like we were the best opportunity because we were the newest person. So why not? So, since we don't want to hide in our room because we actually want to hear the distraction, so let's go to room 17 and hide inside there. And we don't need to unlock it because uh, with the key, because we unlocked it and no one's coming here to check it. So here's my spot. All right, now I think we just have to walk on in. And we hear the distraction. Slam, kawump, krakoom. No, that's uh, Batman, whatever, onomatopoeia. Hey, somebody help, help. Real subtle there, Louie. Slam. There goes Jeff. Oh, okay, hi. Right, time to go to work. All right, time to head into room two for thirteen while uh, Jeff's uh, on the on the distraction there. <laughs> no knocking this time. We just gotta walk on in.
Well, well, well. Looks like a uh, little Jeff boy is got a room somewhere to ours. All right, let's check, take a look around here, see what we can find. So, all right, what does he got? Well, it's like he's got the same thing as everyone else. So let's check it out. There's a lamp on the desk. Nice desk. Wish my room had one of those. There's a checkered chair in front of the desk. Oh, come on. Huh? This isn't the same TV I've seen in other rooms. Maybe a personal TV or just whatever. I don't know. All right, nothing there. I know which I know which one I actually have to check, but I'm just messing around for fun. Maybe stuff something in his own toilet. Yep, Rose has definitely been in here. Spotless. Yeah, it's a toilet. I don't need to look any further. It's toilet paper. It's a shower curtain. Yeah, I love this. I love the obvious. Sinks as clean as can be. Rosa deserves a raise. For once, I'd like to see some towels that look like they've been used. Eh, it's just easier not to design a clothes as set that does that. It's a bottle of shampoo. I wonder if the Kyle's breaking the fourth wall with a towel thing. Mirror's clean, real clean, almost scary clean. It's clean and stronger and longer because there's ultra power in it. Have it over here. The bed, he's gotta have a nice, ooh, it's all messy. Bed's a mess. No, can't quit that. There's a reading lamp in the corner of the room. Oops, have it over here. Nope, nothing. And another still life painting on the wall. I've seen a few of those. Yeah, I'm sure have. That's the same phone I've seen in every room. Now at least he doesn't have a unique phone, at least. There's a small stand next to the bed. All right. Well, let's go over here. Now let's check. Uh, I think this whole section can be checked if I recall. Also. No, he's got his backpack there. Perhaps something in there. That must be Jeff's coat. Wonder if it'd fit me. Ooh, hello. Huh, there's something in the jacket pocket. Yeah, it says, uh, Jeff Damon. Or Damon? 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 I'm going to say Damon. I got Jeff's student ID. The name on the card is Jeff Damon. Hmm. Well, he's not Jeff Angel, so he's using a fake name. Why would you need leave your first name the same, though? Or maybe it's a... Anyway. Damon, I've heard that name before. Hmm. Oh, right. It was in the lobby paper. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I remember that. It seems there was a burglary in Beverly Hills last night. Quite brazen, really. The victim was an attorney named Larry Damon. Mr. Damon happens to be a friend of mine. You see, I do hope he's doing well. Perhaps Jeff is Larry's son, maybe? What the hell? Is the attorney in that article Jeff's father? Maybe. Was there anything else on the on that so I could check? Let's try that again. That must be Jeff's coat. Wonder if it'd fit me. Yeah, yeah. I just wonder if there's a no, just the pocket thing. Okay, just making sure there wasn't like an extra, extra bit of uh, extraness. You know what I mean? There's a lamp on the stand. Yeah, yes. It's a nice leather sofa. Angel got the swank room for sure. There's a small stand in the corner of the room. It's an empty beer can. Just one, huh? Think you would drink more. There's a low table in front of the sofa. Great for resting your feet. Oh, yeah. You could. You get all nasty, too. Anyway, let's check the backpack. The obvious thing. There's a bag on the sofa. Ooh, his keys. Anything else we can click? Nope. Okay. Grab the obvious. Look what's in his bag. I got the room 215 key. Hmm. Interesting. So Jeff's got the master key to my room, huh? Must have stolen it from, uh... Uh, Dunning's office, maybe. Maybe he did the same thing I did or something like that. Hmm. Alright, I think we're done, so let's get out of here before Jeff comes back. Uh oh. Huh? Well, two can play at this game. You know, he comes to my room, I come in the room, yada yada yada, you know. And boom. Good, good bang, boom. We're gonna get in trouble. Anyway, alright, let's confront this guy. I mean, might as well do it now. What's the deal? Jeff closes the door and comes into the room. 
What are you doing in here? This is my room. You better get out of here now. Yeah, I thought it was the kitchen. Ain't Rosa around here somewhere? Are you trying to be funny? Are you laughing at me? Am I a clown to you? No, uh, uh, well, laugh it off. I'm calling the front desk and getting the police over here. Bad idea, pal. You're the last person who wants to see the cops. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, just a feeling I've got. Now wait, just one. So here we are in your room, just a couple of guys having a harmless chat. Tell me something, Jeff. You got a thing for cops and robbers, right? Is a little casual B&E a crime? That's breaking and entering if you were confused. Oh, I know what it is, all right. I'm not stupid. Of course it's a crime. I keep changing his voice on me. Now get out of my room. Oh yeah, I'm going. Don't you worry about it. But tell me something, since you're so smart and all, why'd you do it? Do what? You know. You know. What'd you do when you broke into my room, huh? Watch TV? Nap on the bed? Are you accusing me of something? Time to play this sap like a violin. Time to sing, little birdie. Yeah, you had, uh, you got my floor wet, jerk. No, you hit cash on my john. You had a stack of cash inside the toilet tank, didn't you? Huh? Look, if I had a stack of cash, I'm sure I wouldn't hide it in someone's toilet, okay? Gonna play dumb, huh? Unless you have proof, I think you should drop it. Proof? Aren't you the guy who wanted to search everyone in the entire hotel? Oh, I got proof. I got all the proof I need. Yeah, I got intuition. Well, that would work in some cases, but in this case, we need, uh... We need obvious stuff, not just supposed does and thinks and whatever. I got an eyewitness. Got an eyewitness who saw you come out of my room. Huh? Yeah, nice comeback. Oh, and I also know about the piece you stashed in the cart. And knock it off. You can't just say things like that. Give it up, kid. You're not getting any way with this. Why'd you do something so stupid anyway? Yeah, now we need to ask him all the questions. Now we finally... Ah, I need to know about that cash, buddy. Yeah, we're doing a confrontation like we did with Martin uh, a few episodes ago, so... There's a reason you hid that cash in my room. You wanted to see me take a fall. Look, I didn't hide any cash in your room. I w how would I ever get in there? What? If you're gonna say things like that, you better have proof. Proof? I guess I need something more to nail this punk. Alright, well, you know, if we, uh... So we need proof, huh? Alright, alright. We got some proof. I'm gonna show him something. Gonna point something right in his face. Take this man. Why are you showing me that? Found this piece in the laundry room. That's where you hit it, right? I don't know what you're talking about. You're lying, punk. Why are you so convinced that I hid it? I bet if you dust it for prints, you'd only find yours. Oh yeah, we probably did. We probably just did grab it with our hands, didn't we? That's gonna be... That's gonna be a little difficult, so... Let's, uh, let's give him another piece of info that we got, so... Oh, I guess I... The room duplicate key that you have in your bag, dude. Oh. You want to tell me what you're doing with this? Dot, dot, dot. Hmm. Well, apparently it's not enough to get a reaction from him. All right. Got one more piece of evidence for you, buddy. We got your ID. Right here. You better say something. What's that supposed to be? I don't know anything about it. Hmm. Well, you're not going to get a reaction from anything, so... All right. All right, fine. We don't have a we don't have what we need right now. Perhaps we need something for later. I guess it's time to back off. I guess. All right, time for us to leave then. We'll be back, kid. Hmm. But now what? Wait a minute. What was that windbag summer going on about? I must tell you about this article I was reading in the newspaper. 
It seems there was a burglary in Beverly Hills last night. Quite brazen, really. The victim was an attorney named Larry Damon. Mr. Damon happens to be a friend of mine, you see. I do hope he's doing well. That's it, that newspaper. Hmm, that newspaper, huh? So, let's go grab that then, shall we? Oh yeah, this is gonna be a long episode, by the way, because we're actually pretty close to the end of the chapter. I wouldn't say this chapter is super short, but it's short enough, so. Comparatively. Right, let's grab that paper back there. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give I want that paper. I want that paper. Day on the newspaper, December 28th. That's today. Let's see what's in the paper today. Well, I want to take it, so. Home of a prominent Beverly Hills attorney burglarized. The Beverly Hills home of attorney Larry Damon was burglarized last night. Police say 20,000 and a pistol were taken from a safe in the study. The perpetrator then fled the scene in Damon's car. A police spokesman said they are actively pursuing the case. I picked up the lobby newspaper. All right, so that's it, huh? Cash from my John is from this robbery. Okay, okay, we got something now. All that other stuff, okay. You weren't gonna do anything about it? Well, I've got this newspaper. But I think we need something a little bit more before we do that, so let us head back to the to our room and grab something. A little bit of evidence we need. We put it away before, because, you know, we didn't want to get caught by Dunning or whatever while carrying this stuff around. Because like I said in a previous episode, that if you um, if you had it on you, uh, Dunning, you'd get a game over from Dunning because he'd search you. Weirdly enough, if you don't have it on you, he never appears in that spot. So Anyway, we need to look inside and grab that cash. I pull a stack of cash out of my suitcase. Right, I think that's all we need to grab, actually. So. I'm surprised it isn't still wrapped up in that bag and everything like that, but hey, why not? Alright, let's go back to room 213, because I uh, Jeff's still in there, so he'll you know, probably let us inside, because why not? After everything we've been doing, so. Oops, knock, knock. I'm back. It's Kyle Hyde. I'm not talking to you, go away. Open up, you asked for proof, I got proof. You're busted, kid. I know what you did in Beverly Hills. What? Let me in. By the hair of my chain chin chin, which I do have. It's one way or another. I'm coming in. All right, all right, come in. Okay, so uh, this with this thing with Jeff, you have to be kind of careful with it because if you do some, if you do say something wrong, you actually end up in a game over. So you have to be uh, make sure you got everything. Um, uh, simple on this so you have to know what you're doing and everything like that so alright so let's do this all over again okay first let's show him the pistol again just to show our, our what we're doing put that away I told you I don't know anything about that okay so we, did, we showed him the pistol now we need to show him the duplicate key again. We're just kind of repeating ourselves just to kind of build up our case against against Jeff here, so. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah, he knows. He knows we know. He's, he's going to sing like a canary, my friend. And then we're going to show him the ID. You must not be very bright. I told you I don't know anything about that, even though it says your name and everything like that. But, and your picture, by the way. But okay. Let's show him the stack of cash. Wavy, wavy. Eggs and baking. It was you. I knew it. You stole my money. You hid this dough in my room. I don't know what you're talking about. Where did you get the money? I said I don't know what you're talking about. Why don't you understand? And then finally, let's show him that lobby newspaper we just grabbed. Whoops. Whoops. No, no. Show him the lobby newspaper. Hey, that article. The guy who got robbed in Beverly Hills is named Damon. 
The same name that's on this student ID. That's... And guess what has taken from the Damon residence? 20 large and a gun. Uh, er. Okay, now that we've done that, now we can actually ask him the questions. He'll actually answer them this time. You hid the cash I found in my room, didn't you? I told you I don't know anything about that. You're really getting on my nerves. What? If you're gonna say things like that, you better have proof. Proof? We just had this conversation. I need something more to nail this punk. Well, we already asked him about that, so... Alright, well, let's ask him about the gun this time, so... Okay, I know why you hit the pistol in the laundry cart. You wanted to make somebody else into a criminal. No, I didn't. I told you I don't know anything about that. Okay. And then your real name is... Your real name's Jeff Damon, isn't it? Uh, no, it's not. How many times do I have to tell you? My name's Jeff Angel. Okay. So, uh... Okay, let's see. Let me try... Okay, so... Actually, I think I might have done this a little out of order, so let me try this again. Okay, sorry about that. I think I did it, like, um... Uh, okay, and then let me then let me show him the stuff again. Sorry about that. I think I was supposed to ask him about the cash first and then show him the stuff, and I skipped a step. Uh, they, yeah, okay, he said ah this time. Okay, sorry, I was a little off. Good thing you, you good thing you can have a little bit of a, um, be off by a little bit and be fine, so. Yeah, he said ah. Uh. Yeah, now he's reacting to my stuff I showed him. Yeah, I should have asked him the cash thing and then shown him the stuff. Now he's just reacting to, uh, everything after the fact, so. Hey, that's my student ID. Yeah, now, now he's actually responding, so. All right, now we ask him about the stack of cash. That's... What are you doing with this much scratch? You steal it from mommy and daddy? Uh... Yeah, now he's caving in. We're, we're gonna get you, pal. That's, um... Okay, now that we've shown him everything, now I should be able to ask him about the cash now. There's a reason you hid that cash in my room. You wanted trouble. You wanted to cause a big stink. So you took the master key to my room and hid the money in the john. Er. Those aren't the actions of your average Joe, pal. The only one who's going to get a hurt in this mess is you. So why'd you do it? 20 large, just something to play with for you? You mistake me for a sap that would just take the fall? Is this a game to you? That it? Stop playing the fool and grow up. Grow up? Like, I haven't heard that before. You sound like just like him, you know? That makes me so mad. Stop treating me like I'm stupid. I'm not a kid. Well, you're sure acting like a kid. You're sure acting stupid. Don't pretend to know one single thing about me. Hmm. Yeah, now we got a new question. But I know about the gun. I know why you hid the pistol in the laundry cart. Yeah, you felt the heat. Nope, he wanted it to be found. It's because you wanted someone to find it. You stole the gun from your own house. Yeah, so what? Yeah, we're getting him. We're getting there, folks. Yeah, one more case. We're close. Your real name is... Your real name is... Jeff Angel. Mind Freak. No, uh, Jeff Damon. The proof's on your student ID. Er. Why are you hiding your real name? It's my father's name. I don't need it. Sounds like you need it. I don't, I don't know. All right, now we got a whole new set of questions. So, who do I sound like exactly? So, who do I sound like? Huh? 
I told you to grow up, right? You said I sound like somebody. Yeah, like my papa. Who calls her dad papa? Well, I guess different parts of the world, I guess. Papa? You telling me you call your old man papa? That's right. What of it? Uh, nothing, I guess. So, uh, what kind of man is your papa? What kind of man is he? Is he, is he a miserable little pile of secrets? What's he do for a living? He's a lawyer. Lawyer, huh? Sounds like he's got his act together. I don't like certain someone. Not even close. Look, I've had about... You're wrong. Dead wrong. My papa's a total scumbag. Well, he's a lawyer, right? So... Yeah, now we got another... Now we got another question, so... So let's ask him about his dad's name. Why do you hate your old man's name so much? I don't want to have a jerk like him as my father. I don't know. It sounds like what he had passed down to his son. That's why. All right. He hates his dad. Well, he's got a silver spoon and all that. Or man in the moon and all that other stuff. So, all right. Let's ask him about the gun now. Why would you put the gun where someone would find it? I figured they'd call the cops once it got found. That's all. Well, good thing I found it, I guess, so... I guess at this point, so... Anyway, let's ask him the final question here. Um, your old man that bad? Your old man as bad as that, all that? And a bag of chips? Worse. He's an arrogant scumbag who thinks he's always right about everything. And he doesn't trust anyone but himself. Not even his own family. Hmm. Look, kid, I don't care if your name's Angel or Damon or McGillicuddy. Got it? I don't even care whose money that is. All I want to know is why you did it. You think I know? Why are we talking about this? No one understands me. Why, well, you act like a teenager. Jeez. I don't even think I acted like that as a teenager. I could be wrong. It's been like... God, how many years since I was a teenager? Like, 25 years? Jeez. Give it a rest, will ya? You're an open book, kid. Had you pegged from the moment I laid eyes on you. You're such a liar. What do you think you know about me? Where do you want me to start? Never worked a day in your life, so you got no idea about the true value of money. That's why you can steal 20 grand from your old man without a blink in an eye. Without blinking an eye. That's why you could take it and use it and lose it just to get a little attention. Yeah, I'd like to have $20,000. There's a lot of good things I can use for myself or my family with that much money. Like, just straight up. You never used a gun in your life. I'm not sure you'd imagine what it'd be like. You got no idea what it's like to pull the trigger to take a life. You got no idea what it takes to bleed a man out and watch his light go. That's why you toss a gun into a laundry cart like it means nothing. I don't know what set you off, but I know you wanted to put a scare into Papa. That's why you took his cash and his heater and ran like hell. Of course, you didn't know what to do with him after you stole him. And after you showed your belly and ran, you had nowhere to go. So you find a girl on the road with a hotel brochure and you end up here. And that's when you meet me. Just some down-as-luck salesman. Not too bright, not too dangerous. You plant the goods on me, then sit back and wait for Papa to love you again. I, I didn't... I wasn't... Enough. I did not come to the hell, this hellhole just to hear you bleat like a damn sheep. You're gonna tell me everything, and you're gonna do it now. Do not make me ask twice. Kyle put on his dad voice. <laughs> All right, all right. Uh, do, what do I say? I mean, you're right. You lived in the world, right? Me? I mean, I'm just a kid. I'm nothing, just a spoiled little rich kid. This I know. Keep going. It's, it's true. Everything you said is true. I can't stand my papa. I can't forgive him for who he is and what he does. I did all this just to get under his skin. I didn't plan it. I just opened the safe and grabbed the stuff and ran. I didn't know what he'd, done, what he'd done until I saw the newspaper. He knew it was me who took his precious money and his damn gun. 
He knew it was me, and he still called the cops. You know what my parents are doing right now? Mom's crying on the sofa. And Papa, he's telling her how he's doing this for me, teaching me a lesson. You want to know what my Papa's like, right? Let me tell you. All right, go ahead, sir. Right, we're going to be here all day, apparently. He's a defense lawyer, not just any lawyer. The best, a genius. Hire Papa, and he'll convince a jury that black is white and night is day. That's why Papa spends a, spend a fortune getting him to. Uh, that's why people spend a fortune getting him to defend him. And if you can pay it, it doesn't matter what you've done. Theft, okay. Assault, sure. Tax evasion, no problem. But uh, he's your man. He'll go to bat for anyone, even organized crime. Hell, especially organized crime. Organized crime? Yeah, right. Now he's talking, working for a group of low eyes called Nail or Nile or something. What? Jess old man is working for Nile? Oh, kid. Yeah, that's who he is. That's my papa. Man, people are tying into each other weirdly in this hotel. This hotel is a weird co place of coincidences. Scum of the earth. Where'd you learn all this? He'd bring, he'd bring his men by the house from time to time. Unsociable types, you know. Papa said they had business they couldn't discuss at the office. I happened to overhear some of their conversations, and that's how I found out. That these guys are part of Nile, I mean. That's it, huh? Papa's getting filthy rich off what these guys are paying him. So that's cool that I uh, boosted a small chunk of it, right? 20,000 is a small chunk? I'm in the wrong business. So what's the plan? Since I learned Papa called the cops, I've been thinking. He wants me to come crawling home with my tail between my legs. And hey, why not, right? That's what I've always done. But I've changed. I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to embarrass him. That's why I did all this and tried to get Dunning to call the police. I figured they'd get here and see through my story and arrest me. My being arrested will cause all kinds of trouble for Papa. Then the press will come and ask why I did it, and I'll tell him. I'll tell him that what a crook Papa is. I'll tell him all the dirty stuff he's doing. <laughs> What's so funny? You know something, kid? I've seen dumb before. It's not often I meet stupid. What? You trying to punch your old man's ticket to the morgue? I don't... Knock this crap off. I toss the cash and the gun and the student ID on the floor. This is yours. Take it and go home. Go see your father. You think this is a good plan? You think you're smart? What happens when you go to the press and talk about how your old man's mobbed up? You think Niles just gonna sit back and do nothing? Go ahead, shoot your mouth off. You and the old man can push up daisies together. But... Shut up. You want your papa away from now? You want him to keep breathing? Here's what you do. Take your sorry ass home and never do anything like this again. But how, how am I... What am I supposed to do then? You want the old man to change? You change first. Stop depending on him for everything. Try standing on your own two feet. Mr. Hyde. Do that and your old man will come around. You'll be showing him how to live. Now get out of here. Man, Kyle was just here to like find out about Bradley. Now he's telling kids about how to run their lives and everything like that. What is he getting himself caught up into? Looks like I've wrapped up Jeff and his burglary fiasco, too. Still can't believe Jeff's old man has ties to Nile. That coincidences are probably up faster than I can count. How many times have I heard the name Nile since I've been here? I better take a breather and clear my head. I need to have all this sorted out before I go on. All right, it's end of chapter questionnaire time. Have you been paying attention, viewers? Oh, I did it all in one episode, so yeah, hopefully you've been paying attention. So, After I heard Summer's confession, I went back to my room. Then Rachel called and told me about the painting, Angel opening a door, about a painting. 
Seems the thing was stolen from a New York art museum three years ago. We talked, and then I went to meet Rosa and ended up running into Jeff. Jeff asked me, Look after Mila, will you? Oh, no. Uh, what's wrong with him? Uh, no, it doesn't say anything. That's right. That's what the punk said. He was grinning from ear to ear like he was glad he got robbed. And now we know why. I heard from Rosa that Mike was running a fever. Or Mila, sorry. I just said Mike. I went to check up on her and use my notebook to chat with her. I learned that her father's name is... Is... Robert Evans. That's right. Mila's father's name is Robert Evans. The bracelet she wears was a gift from him. I did my best, best Betsy Ross imitation and sewed up Melissa's rag doll. Betsy Ross is the lady who sewed the supposedly sewed the first American flag for the uh, Continental Congress and the Continental Army, for those who are unaware. That's when Melissa told me she'd seen Jeff coming out of my room. I knew Jeff was trouble, so I went back in and gave uh, the laundry room a quick search. What I found there was an un was unexpected. It was the best thing ever. A crowbar. I mean, a gun. But guns are best thing ever. Ah, no. uh, that's right. I found it under a mountain of sheets in the laundry cart. Nice piece, too. Louis waltzed into the laundry room, so I told him about the pistol and the cash. We both figured Jeff was involved somehow and decided to roll him up. While Louis kept Jeff busy, I took a little stroll through his room. I patted down Jeff's jacket and found a sewing machine. No, this is ID. That's right. I found Jeff's student ID in the breast pocket of his coat. I saw the name on the card and realized that Jeff was using a fake name. I put together proof that Jeff was lying through his teeth. Then I suck, stuck his feet to the coals and asked why he was trying to stir up trouble. Jeff told me all about his idiotic plan and how he was ticked off at the old man. His father's name is Larry Damon and he makes a living as a... As a lawyer! That's right, Jeff's father is a lawyer. Knocked me for a loop when I heard he was a hired mouthpiece for Nile. Jeff's yarn was sad in a pitiful sort of way, another father and son story gone wrong. It did convince me of one thing though, people do stupid things. Well that's obvious. But when you ask them, they always got a reason. Tell me Bradley, why'd you do it? For what price did you sell our trust, your soul? Maybe that's all I want to know. Maybe that's why I'm chasing ghosts and lies. The sun sets and hotel dusk retreats into darkness. Like the shadows that creep across the floor, I'm moving towards an answer. What, but what answer is he moving towards? What, what other problems will we get caught up into? Do you like ghost stories? We'll find out next time in Chapter 6 of Hotel, du room, hotel Dusk Room 215. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.